dear students now we will discuss about population policies and programs as part of that we would like to first talk about the major population issues in developed as well as developing countries under this module we will be trying to understand the need for understanding the population related issues the population problems that are faced by developing countries population problems faced by the developed countries to start with let us look at a quotation from the executive director of un population fund during 1968 to 1987 i quote just as effective development depends on reliable knowledge of natural and other resources so does effective development planning depend on natural knowledge of composition growth and movement of the population this was the quotation from the then executive director of un population fund on 21st may 1975 unquote this quote tells us about the importance of understanding the population related variables and factors why should uh, one have an understanding of population and its related factors as all of us know population affects various indicators that are related to development as well as other sectors that are related to development in view of this it is imperative to get an understanding of the population related issues and the emerging challenges in developing as well as developed countries while on this the issues and challenges differ from country to country in fact it depends on the population growth rate or fertility rate experienced by the respective country when one is talking about the population dynamics one has to have holistic understanding of population growth related issues and also the challenges that are faced by poor as well as rich nations population dynamics and changes in the population growth age structure and distribution they are all closely linked to national as well as global developmental challenges and the solutions also when we are talking about the population related problems both developing and developed countries share many problems that are related to population but of course the problem of low population developing countries and high population developing countries also vary substantially this has to be kept in mind even among the developing countries depending on the kind of population growth they have experiencing the kind of problems they face also vary to a substantial extent let us talk about population growth according to the estimates provided by united nations in late 2011 the world's population surpassed the 7 billion mark the current estimates indicate that 82 million people are added to the global population every year and the projections indicate that by the year 2050 the world's population is expected to reach somewhere between 8.3 to 10.9 billion but one interesting aspect one has to note here is that most of this population future growth will be occurring in developing countries particularly in the least developed countries this has a bearing on population as well as development scenario of these countries let us look into the issues related to population and resources in many of the developing countries the current population growth rates would undermine their development and also put pressure on the future generations in view of this 
the human population consumes more than half of the world's renewable resources and as a result of that there is tremendous pressure on the national natural resources and this kind of pressure would continue in the coming days. When we talk about the population growth for instance, the population of sub-Saharan Africa is expected to be quadruple by 2100 according to the projections given by UNPA. The kind of increase in population is perhaps due to the less reduction or in some cases no reduction at all in fertility in some of the countries. The analysis also indicates that in some developing countries they have too many children whereas on the other hand in many of the developed countries they have the situation of too, too little or too few children. Continuing on the kind of population problems the countries are likely to face or the countries are currently facing the countries with fastest growth rates they already have difficulties in feeding their population because the numbers are increasing the resources are limited there is tremendous pressure on the kind of resources they have the, so this kind this leads to a situation that feeding the population itself becomes a major challenge for these countries across the world the key resources including water energy and food they are becoming increasingly scarce day by day and they are also between quite expensive all of us experience this in our day to day lives. So, the nations are confronted with the effects of climate change as well. We all know the kind of impact climate change will have on food security and food availability to the vulnerable population sections of the countries. Continuing on the population issues, the tasks like adapting to climate change, developing social and ecologically sustainable economic structure and institution uh, good governance all of them you know they need attention from policy and program point of view. The less developed countries as well as the more populated countries among the less developed countries we also have more populated countries. So, we are talking about these countries which are less developed and they have higher population pressure. So, these countries have to address the issues such as poverty, conflict, armed violence, high disaster risk, low resilience and then very weak uh, governance systems in place etcetera. So, these are the kind of issues that are faced by less developed countries, but having higher population growth. Let us understand the situation in terms of technological development. Some of the developing countries have the situation of low levels of technological development and in view of this there are implications in terms of agriculture productivity as well as industrial productivity. To cite an example, we can think of countries like Pakistan, Myanmar, Nepal, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines and other countries. All these countries have problems relating to low levels of technological development and technological adoption. In view of this, the productivity is having very low levels of uh, growth. So, these need attention from the development point of view. Let us move to the aspects related to economic growth. Low productivity as we saw in the previous uh, slide, low productivity is because of low levels of technological development and advancement in many of the developing countries which are having population pressure. So, this kind of low productivity also leads to very slow pace of the economic growth. So, the pace of economic growth is affected by the low productivity level which is because of the technological advancement related issues in developing countries. On the other hand some of the developing countries also have very disproportionate share of the end population. As a result of this there is tremendous pressure on the comparatively small proportion of the working population. So, this kind of age structure changes and as a result of that there is pressure on the working population which is in terms of proportion not so high. So, now let us uh, look into the development related issues or 
in particular the levels of development or lack of development related aspects. In some of the developing countries, lack of development of secondary and tertiary sectors is an issue. As a result of that, the employment opportunities that are available are very limited, particularly for the people with skills and educational levels. This needs attention and they also move to more developed towns or sometimes even the countries abroad in search of better job opportunities, because the limited uh, opportunities are available at their place, they are forced to move to developed towns or sometimes to other countries in search of better job opportunities or livelihood opportunities. As a result of that, the demographic structure in uh, both the countries, the origin country as well as the destination country gets distorted. Let us talk about youth population. In many of the developing countries, the situation is that the numbers and proportions of youth and working age population is increasing. And of course, this will lead to a kind of a demographic bonus on a short term, short term basis. At the same time, it also creates challenges in terms of provision of education and creating employment opportunities to the youth that are looking for economic opportunities, educational opportunities and employment opportunities. You know the need for skill development, the need for livelihood, the need for employment creation, the need for educational attainment will emerge as major challenges in many of these countries. Let us look into the aspects related to hygiene and sanitation, which will have a bearing on the overall health set status of the people. Some developing countries that are overpopulated also have low levels of hygiene and very high levels of malnutrition. And this also leads to very low standards of living and this also can be attributed to the poor living conditions and uh, low levels of standard of living of the people. As a result of this, they have low levels of standard of living, poor living conditions, they have low levels of hygiene and sanitation, higher levels of malnutrition. All these factors will lead to higher levels of incidence of diseases that is morbidity and mortality as well. Here children and women of reproductive ages are the most vulnerable sections of the society. Coming to the production related uh, scenario, some of the developing countries have agrarian based economy and it is characterized by subsistence production with low levels of technology. Many a times uh, you see traditional and obsolete methods and implements for cultivation are in use. They also have the problems of lack of capital for investment, fragmented you know fragmented or very small land holdings and uh, semi feudal uh, tenancy relations. All these factors will make the agriculture based economy very weak. And as a result of this, the economic vulnerability of the farming communities in these countries becomes a major uh, issue to be addressed. Let us talk about uh, the living standards of the population. Many of the developing nations have very weak industrial base. This is due to various factors such as uh, lack of capital, outdated technology and uh, many times inadequate uh, skilled manpower, because availability of skilled manpower is also an issue in many of these countries, as we have seen in the previous uh, slides. And these factors prevent the substantial improvement in living standards of the people, and because the dependency is very high on agriculture, and agriculture is not able to give uh, the expected levels of uh, production, uh, low levels of production are there 
and the as a result of this the living standards of the people are affected in a big way. And then there are also some development related issues. For instance, in uh, some of the development countries low levels of education, inward looking attitude and cultural barriers they all restrict flow of information. It may be in terms of birth control or it may be in terms of family planning or it may be in terms of uh, any of the related to health or other issues that are vital for women as well as children who are more often vulnerable in these kind of uh, countries. On the other hand, we also have situation with uh, high levels of poverty, very high levels of malnutrition, hunger, even bedding is also noticed in these countries. These are all commonly observed in uh, many of the developing countries that are having higher population growth. So, poverty, malnutrition, hunger, bedding and other factors uh, that are faced by developing countries with uh, higher population growth also need attention. Coming to the specific aspects related to human development, in view of the factors we have discussed so far, the overall human development gets affected, because the overpopulation of a country puts pressure on infrastructure, because the resources are very limited. One example can be taken from the health sector. If you look at the kind of health facilities that are available in uh, many of the developing countries, maybe in terms of uh, doctor population ratio or beds per patient or nurse patient ratio, if you take any of these indicators, the analysis indicates that the health infrastructure is inadequate to meet the needs of the people. In these countries that are developing, but uh, overpopulated, we also see over exploitation of the natural resources. It can be water, it can be land and this is a very common uh, situation in many of uh, these countries. And then what are the implications of uh, over population? The consequences are in terms of higher levels of unemployment higher levels of rural to urban migration in sets of livelihood and better economic opportunities. As a result of rural urban migration, one can see a shifting of poverty from rural areas to urban areas. One can also see the growth of slums, very high levels of pollution in the urban areas that are congested and they also have poor infrastructure. And then overall you will have situation like poor quality of life of the people. Another major issue that is seen in developing countries that are having higher population growth pertains to child labor, because the families with larger family size force their children to work instead of going to school the children are deprived of going to school, rather they are encouraged or rather they are forced to go to the fields to work and earn money. So, the learning gets neglected and earning becomes more important for the families. As a result of that, child labor is a major problem faced in these countries. And many times the children also participate in hazardous work. As a result of that, they have very higher risk in terms of morbidity as well as mortality. We, are, we discussed briefly about agriculture, but some more ideas on agriculture. On one hand, you have low returns from the agriculture because of issues related to technology. On the other hand, the demand for infrastructure increases that leads to 
conversion of agriculture fertile land to other purpose such as industrialization or other purpose. As a result of that the agriculture production is likely to be affected and this will have implications in terms of food security and also may lead to malnutrition as well as hunger. We looked into the issues relating to population for the developing countries. Now, let us spend some time to understand the issues relating to population in developed countries. The developed countries are characterized by higher levels of industrialization and urbanization, very high levels of uh, per capita income, dependence of uh, major part of the workforce on secondary or tertiary activities and of course, they also have an efficient and productive agriculture sector. But one major issue the developed countries are facing pertains to the elderly population. Most of these developed countries are less populated, they have very high proportion of uh, old age population. This is because of two factors, very low levels of death rates and very higher levels of life expectancy. As a result of this, very large proportion of the population in uh, the developed countries is above 60 plus and this elderly population is dependent on relatively small workforce. So, what are the consequences of uh, population aging? This leads to issues related to financial problems due to pensions, health services etcetera. And most of the developed countries already attained older age structures and they are also experiencing declining proportion of youth and working age adults. All these factors would uh, lead to negative consequences in terms of uh, labor supply and old age support ratios. Continuing on the kind of implications the population aging will have in the developed countries, in many of the developed countries the economic, political and social conditions are affected by population aging through economic growth, savings and investment, labor supply and employment, pension schemes, health and long term care intergenerational transfers, family composition and living arrangements. And all these factors will also put pressure on the traditional family support systems. Another dimension related to this because of the changes in the age structure and increase in the old, older population leading to decrease in young youth population is the labor shortage. Many of the developed countries that are having less population growth are facing the problem of shortage of labor. By 2050, German population is predicted to drop by 10 million and Germany is already facing the problem of shortage of skilled workers and they, the only way for them is they need more immigration from other countries in the coming days, so that the labor shortage issues are taken care of. And then looking at the demographic uh, structure of the developed countries, the rural to urban migration in sets of better living conditions is also leading to distorted demographic structures, particularly in the rural areas and as a result of that the agriculture sector is neglected. I think uh, that is the end of uh, this uh, module, in sum what we have done is that we discussed about the population problems that are faced in developing countries in terms of uh, human development, in terms of health, in terms of uh, hygiene and sanitation, in terms of educational development, in terms of skill development and other factors. We also have looked into the kind of problems that are faced in the developed countries which are having less population burden. As a result of the increase in elder population and decrease in the youth population that are productive and that are working age population, the developed countries with uh, less population burden are facing the situation of labor shortage 
and need for socio economic and other support to be provided to the elderly population. So, these are the kind of uh, problems that are faced by developing countries as well as developed countries as a result of the population growth and changes in the population structure and the changes in the population dynamics as a whole.